Okay, I'm live. Uh, I tend to be very proactive and not reactive. And we're going to talk about something very serious, especially to men. And, and that is a warning to stay away from immoral women on Facebook and other social media sites and other places where they may be able to be contacted. Okay, and I'm going to read to you from Proverbs, and, and I'm also going to share uh, my opinion and then also commentary about what Solomon has to say to his son and how it relates to us as well. It's a very serious subject because a lot of families, a lot of uh, uh, marriage couples, a lot of even single people get hurt. And I hate to see that. God hates to see that. It grieves the Holy Spirit. And so Solomon has been repeatedly warning his son not to involve himself with any kind of immorality or an adulterous woman. And I figure the reason he did that is because he had a lot of wives and a lot of mistresses, and he had, and God warned him not to do that. He, and, and even though he was the wisest man that ever lived, he allowed himself to get engaged in that, and it hurt him greatly. So as we read through Proverbs, he's warning against idolatry, and he says this in, in verse 20, and we're going to go from verse 20 all the way to verse 29. He says, My son, keep your father's commands. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them upon your heart forever. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. For these commands are a lamp. This teaching is a light, and corrections of discipline are the way of life, keeping you from the immoral woman. Okay, the first part of this is that he's going to talk about is seduction. Okay, and that's an immoral woman making advances towards the man. I'll tell you right now on Facebook, I hate it when women come on to me. I resent it. It's disrespectful to me as a man. Okay, I, I am not on Facebook to garner any kind of potential relationship with any woman. This is not the place to do that. Okay? I do this for ministry purposes only. Okay? When a woman comes on to me, and many have, I, I, don't, I, don't, ex, I don't like those kind of advances. Let me tell you something. Any man worth his salt does not want to be chased by a woman that looks desperate. Okay? I honestly believe in my heart that God has someone for the most part for everybody. When the time is right, when uh, uh, the man sees the right person, he will approach her. He will seek her as a treasure. Okay? And that's what she is to him. And I believe God has one person for one person. Now, if the person dies, then he has another person, okay? But one person at a time that God has, for the most part, for everybody, unless they're a eunuch, or they decided that what they're going to do is remain single for the rest of their lives. And many people do that. People that have determined that they want to stay single do not want to be approached, okay? They have decided that they're going to dedicate their lives to ministry, into service of God. The Apostle Paul makes it really clear in 1 Corinthians. If you marry, you have not sinned. But I'm going to warn you, you're going to have trouble in this world because your interests are going to be divided. One, the interest to serve the Lord. The other, an interest to serve your mate. Now, in the case of an immoral woman, man, now you got real complications. Okay? Because she's not in it for the right reasons or the right motive. She wants what she wants when she wants it. Often because... She's either lonely, she's, she wants a companion, she is somehow or another she's in a situation that makes her feel, and she really wants that. What she needs to do is get on her knees, pray out to God, and wait on Him, meanwhile being holy as He's holy. And that's the kind of, and let me tell you something, 
women. There are a lot of men out there looking for that kind of women. So let me just start with that and give you a warning right off the back. Okay, he says, keeping you from the immoral woman. Let me, and then he gives the, his, the seduction of a woman, what she does. And they often, they say, uh, this is the kind of things they, they, they say. Keeping you from the immoral woman, from the smooth tongue of the wayward wife. That's a pretty bad description, okay? And, and then he says this, you know, they talk a real sweet talk, they doll themselves all up, and then they say, uh, he warns, do not lust in your heart after her beauty, or let her captivate you with her eyes. For the prostitute, and that's what God calls her, you know, reduces you to a loaf of bread. Guys, that's what she will do to you. She will reduce you you go from being seduced to being reducted. You know, what happens to a piece of bread? It gets consumed and it's spit out. It doesn't exist anymore, okay? And, 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 and the, the adulteress preys upon your very life. And then he gives this warning. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? It's a hypothetical, no. You play with fire, you're going to get burned, okay? Let me tell you something. There are a lot of immoral women out there. You know, uh, the times and the culture has changed radically. I am very weary of the kind of advances that they make. You know, even Christian women, you know, because they take and they have conformed to the ways of the world and they try to use their tactics and scheme to attract a guy. And then what happens when they get them? They reduce them into a loaf of bread, okay, and they consume them. Guys, you don't want that, okay, at all. Okay, then it, then it says, can, can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? And the answer is hypothetically no, okay. Then he says this, can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? Look at the imagery he's using here. You know, you think about the pleasure about being with this beautiful, wayward, immoral woman. I can't stand these women that go on Facebook in a bikini, showing off their legs and their feet, showing off all this stuff and saying things. I can't stand them, you know, because it's all seduction. That's what it is. Why do you think they do that? If they were holy and noble and godly women, you know what they would do? They would cover up and only expose that to the person that they truly love. Problem is, they don't have love. You know what they got? Love is agape. I, I'm going to give to you. Lust is arrows. That's what they have, arrows. They lust, and they want others to lust for them. So they seduce and, and cause a lot of men to be what? To, to fall into traps, to fall into temptation. You women that are doing that, if you're on my friends list, if I see you do I'm just going to delete you. There's no point in it. You know, I don't want to see it. Personally, I think it makes you look ugly and cheap. Okay? I don't like to see that, but that's my opinion. Okay. So then it says, can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? So is he who sleeps with another man's wife. No one who touches her will go unpunished. Let me tell you, I've seen murders, uh, what they call passion murders. You know, you get caught up in some of these women that get divorced from their husbands, they run off with some other guy and the ex is, you know, they haven't had time to heal from all that. And what do they do? They go and commit murder or they commit, they kill their wives. You know, and, and I've seen it. It's a horrible description. Well, when Solomon wrote this a couple thousand years ago, it is just as applicable today. Now, this is a tough message, and he's going he's gonna to go uh, into it in, in more graphic detail as we continue on in Proverbs. Okay? So, uh, let me warn you. Stay away from immoral women. If a woman is making advances on you men, then you need to... You need to not pay any attention to that. Okay, God bless you. You all have a great day. You got any questions? You message me. Don't message me personal stuff on Messenger. Okay, I'm not the one for that. You got a church, you go to your church, you talk to your pastor. 
You get involved in a Bible study group. Okay, you make yourself accountable there. Okay? Don't be going to no psychiatrists and psychologists. They don't have answers like your pastor does. Okay? Or a godly elder does. Or a godly Christian brother and sister does. Okay? You need to quit doing the things the way of the world and start getting involved with what God wants you to do. Or you're going to find yourself in deep trouble and get other people in trouble as well.